Hey guys, this is Chesney Hawks here. You are watching My Hammers 11 with the one and only Russ. Hi everybody, Russ from My Hammers 11. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hitting the bell icon so you may prevent me putting your content on. As always, that's saying our channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. Another fan, My Hammers 11. It's, it's taken a while to get Lauren on. She's been busy, very busy, and she's been a bit nervous, but she doesn't need to be nervous when <laughs> DJ Rusty B is here. How are we doing, Loz? Are we all right? Yeah, I'm glad to finally be here. It's taken time, but good I things think it's come, the nerves. Come to, well, good things come to those that, you know, that wait, you know, sometimes. Yeah. But, you, you know, you started doing your own YouTube stuff now, and it's, there's nothing to worry about, is there? I'm, not, I'm all right on my own channel because I just I just talk to my camera. It's the first That's time I've ever to spoken to someone. Oh, but it's it's nothing. There's no difference. It's no difference. Yeah. Um, obviously you at the game on Saturday. That was good, wasn't it? It was emotional. It was good to be back. It was, wasn't it? It was weird because obviously I've been there without any fans, and then I was there when we had Man United game when we had about two thousand five hundred, and I was there at the Southampton game with ten thousand. But but Saturday just seemed to be like just almost some sort of normality it was yeah. a bit weird but yeah it's amazing yeah. amazing yeah it felt felt like it was the first normal thing i've done in like 18 months <laughs> with all them people i was like what's going on it's, like, it's weird isn't it? it's weird i remember like see, i remember when they started opening the pubs again and i was walking around all church and i'd see like i'd see like a a, a pub garden there'll be like 40 or 50 people and i'd be, i'd wince like <laughs> Oh, now there yeah. was like thirty five. Now, now there's like thirty five thousand at wherever it was at London Stadium. So, yeah, and getting the train and things like that's weird, isn't it? I oh, know there was loads of people in the train. I was a bit like, Ooh, but well, that's the thing. I think the last time I got the train was I, I've, I reckon I've got the train four times in the last eighteen months. Mm. Once was to go to the office, which was two weeks ago. The other three times were uh, Saturday, uh, the Southampton game. And uh, Man United game in December. Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely yeah, mental. When you think I got the train to the stadium because I went on a tour in June. Oh. And that was the first time since last probably like two years now. So. It's weird, isn't it? It's just weird. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> it's strange. But there's got to be a point in time where it stops being strange again. Do you know what I mean? There's got to be a point where you go, yeah, okay, we can sort of breathe into this a little bit more. Maybe yeah. Monday, obviously, you know, the Leicester game, that's going to be weird as well. 60,000, you know, full capacity. Maybe even the Crystal Palace game, because that's like a Saturday, three o'clock game. That's proper, you know, traditional. Yeah. I don't know. I was looking at the um, tickets for the Leicester game earlier and nearly all sold out. So. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Barely any seats left. So. Don't surprise me. Don't surprise me at all, I think. You know, it's one of those things where it was it was emotional when when that bubble first bubbles came on on Saturday. Mm. It's going to be exactly the same on Monday. It's even more so, I think, on Monday. Um, but yeah, it's good. So what, what are your what are your thoughts for this season? What do you think? What are your aspirations? What are your goals for this season, Loz? Obviously, we've done really well last season, and it's the best West Ham I've ever seen in my lifetime. Yeah. But we haven't really improved. So, and everyone around us is improving. Yeah, and. I mean, we've got a few days till the season starts, so we better got get some signings in, otherwise. <laughs> it's, yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's sort of like, but that was like even when, like during the close season, to say you know when it was like, oh, we need to get Jesse on or something like that. You know, you're gonna pay pay thirty million pound to basically have the same squad you finished the season with. Do you know yeah, what I mean? No. It was like a bizarre thing. So. Part of me wanted Jesse, part of me didn't want Jesse because I thought actually, you know, it's a lot of money and reinvest. And I think we're gonna have a lot I, I think we're gonna have a busy couple of weeks now in the old transfer window by the looks. Yeah, of, yeah. I hope so. Um which it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. You know, it's one of those things where I think, you know, on paper, I thought on Saturday we played really well. On paper, mm. one to eleven, we've got a really good team. Yeah, it's just I agree. When you have that sort of 12, 13, 14, you know, once 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 Antonio gets injured or Deck gets a knock or we have been very lucky with Suchet not getting any suspensions or anything. Yeah, from, I know. That's, that's what worries me a little bit, particularly the extra games as well, Europe, the Europa League and, and 
FA we'll Cup see. and all that. Yeah. It's a ni- I mean, I mean, funny. It's a nice problem to have, isn't it? It's a nice problem to say, yeah, oh, 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 you know, we're gonna tri- we, we could have difficulty because we're gonna we're playing in Europe this season. Yeah, oh, too many shucks. games. <laughs> exactly. It's like Christ, that's such a West Anders in this. You know, when we were, remember last season, we yeah, we're gonna qualify for Europa League or Champions League. Oh, but we're not gonna. Oh, we're gonna struggle. <laughs> Uh, that's such yeah. a West End thing, just like, like a shit sandwich in it at work, where someone, the, you know, the boss says something nice, something shit, then something nice. That's basically West Ham. Yeah, you know, pretty that's much. What we always used to be. Oh, it's brilliant. The boys done great. <laughs> we're going to struggle next season, but it's great. You know, who did you vote for? I, I, I could probably guess who you voted for for your Hammer of the Year last year. I actually voted for Sue Chuck. <gasps> believe it or not, I can, I, I can hear Fabianski. Last He's won it before. Me. He's had it before. Someone I'm else has won it. Pass it around. <laughs> okay, I, I, was, I, did, I was so found, but I was. So yeah. I was watching the awards the other day, and Fabianski said that someone asked him about what it was going to be like having the fans back. And I think that was one of the things that helped last season was not having the demand of West Ham fans because you know what we're like. Yeah. I, I, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got uh, it, my, my, I think it's sometimes definitely so like the beginning of the season for sure. I think people forget the beginning of the season. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much all of all of the summer transfer window. It's like a repeat. It's like an East Enders repeat. It's exactly <laughs> the same as last year. We need a forward. We need a da 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 da. We didn't get any of them. We got Craig Dawson and we didn't get mm-hmm. Milenkovic. Now we're going to get Milenkovic. Yeah. I don't know. So also. we need a <laughs> forward. Da da da. And there was a lot of animosity, you know. It was a bit, and I think we sold Grady just before the just before, didn't we? And then Mark came out of the tweet and. And obviously the mm. Newcastle game we were really poor. The Arsenal game away we were a little bit better, but still lost. I think with sixty thousand people baying at them, it would have maybe knocked a lot of their confidence. Um, yeah, and so it, it gave them more time to 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 grow into the season. But there's there was times last season I'm thinking Arsenal where we we should have if we had sixty thousand yeah. oh, we God. would never. That would never have happened. No. <laughs> it would never have happened. It would have been, you know, we'd have probably won four, four, five, one easy, easy. Um, and a few other games where that, that crowd would have just given them the extra 10%. But look, we'll see what happened. You know, I, I, I want this season to be good seasons just to disprove that theory. Do you yeah, know what so I mean? do I. Not a one I don't want us to do sh- I mean, we sh- I mean, literally... It's like a four, five, it's about a five season cycle. We'll have one good season in five. So, like, you know, the last good season after this was the bowling season. Before then, would have probably been maybe the championship season was a good season for us. Before then, would have been the FA Cup. And, before, you know, it's, it's literally every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I want. It's just like two or three good <laughs> seasons. It's not hard. Like, I'll take, I'll take like top 10 and a good cup run. That's yeah. What I'd... So will I. I think everyone else has spent too much money for us to compete. Um, although, funny enough, I've been interviewing some ex-players today, asking them, you know, where they think we're going to be this season, and some of the some of the uh, answers are quite surprising. You know, there's a very lot of positive, a lot of positivity yeah. amongst ex-players. Um, but we'll see. But we're not. But they're not fans necessarily, are they? They're ex-players. Yeah. So I've um, seen a lot of mixed opinions because. Everyone's saying we've got a curse of doing really well in pre-season, and yeah. then we had that one season, didn't we? Yeah, with the relegation. But I hopefully, think... it's not a curse. No, hopefully, it's not a curse. For me, it's like I, I, I don't understand that though, because you think surely that like, having a good pre-season means you're going, you've got the momentum going into the season. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, it just doesn't seem to work. Like you know, in the same way that I remember we had. Um, a long time ago, when we was, you know, it might be even the bowling season, might be maybe even before then, we were in the Euro, we were sort of in the UEFA Cup proper. It was the Intertoto Cup that was 99 2000. And then we ended up having a really good season the following season because we'd already played like four or five really good, you know, competitive yeah. games already. Um, and so, yeah, I we just don't know, dude. That's why I love West Ham. It's like every day, every, <laughs> every close season, I'm like, right, okay, this season's our season. That's it. We're going to win it. Um, we're going to win I'm something. Positive until we lose. And then yeah. a few days later, I'm like, oh, we're back in it. We're going to win. Typical, typical West Ham, you know, exactly. <laughs> I, I remember really well um, the Newcastle game last season, Newcastle game away. We lost like 2 0, 3 0, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Dawson got sent off for, you know, like passing the ball to someone and tripping him up. Um, and then literally I got text after text after DM from people going, oh, thank God. 
back to normality. I'm not used to this sort of like <laughs> top four. Cha- this is the proper West Ham. And it, there proper. was a sense of sort of like normality about that performance because, because you know, we always have one or two of them. Like I remember Burnley a few years ago, they turned us over 3-0. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, but that is West Ham. It's, it's, you is know, we, yeah. we turn up against Chelsea and Tottenham and, and Man United and then we'll get turned over by Brighton. And, <laughs> but that's us though, isn't it? And I think, you know, well, and the thing last season was different. You know, we did really well with the sort of 14, you know, the 14 teams, 15 teams, no, 13 teams below us and not so good with the teams above us, which is, we used it the other way around. So, um, yeah, I was surprised at how well we done against City because hmm. we drew against them and lost 1-0, didn't we? So but we normally it's give, like 5-0. <laughs> it's true. We always give them a game, though. We do always give them a game. Yeah, even, yeah. If, even if we lose quite heavily, you know, when you talk to the City fans, they always like, they like West Ham going down because of, going to them because they'll have, usually because they win, but <laughs> we usually give them a game and, uh, and you know, make them think a little bit. So that we'll see. We've got, you know, we've got a month until the, well, no, three, two weeks, two and a half weeks, three weeks until the transfer window closes. Let's mm. let's let's see where we are. Let's see I'm where excited. we are. I'm excited. I'm not out in there at all. So no, I'm excited. I'm excited about Europa League. I'm, I'm excited about playing some big teams. I'm excited about watching us play on Thursdays. Um, I've never to... watched West Ham in the Europa. So. No, no. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I haven't watched. I mean, it was yeah, the UEFA Cup would have been. I think we lost to Stenar Bucharest. It was the season after we won the Intertoto Cup. Um, mm. But yeah, that was it. So for me. I'm the same as you, you know, it's like, it'd be nice to, I don't really remember that game, to be honest, um, <laughs> unsurprisingly, um, I think it was on Channel 5 at the time, um, oh. so it wasn't a very good signal, that was when Channel 5, you didn't get a very good signal with Channel 5, and so, we'll see, man, but I think we, we've got a few, hopefully, I think because we haven't got a very good coefficient score, we're going to be drawn against some good teams, we've yeah, got yeah. stronger teams, so, Again, that's great because we never perform well against Ashton <laughs> or people like that. But we'll probably turn over Marseille. We need the hard teams. We need that's a me. We need the hard teams. Astra Gugu and and um uh FC Burkakara and FC Yokari and all these teams we never perform well against in the same way mm. that we always get used to get knocked out in the cup by Stockport and Walsall and Wrexham. It's the same type yeah. of thing. It's sort of like a European basis, but I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, Loz, right. Why are you a West Ham fan? My family are West Ham through and through. Mm. My nan, my granddad and my dad. I was literally born a West Ham baby. I was mm. forced into it. <laughs> no, no chance. No, I didn't go to many games as a kid, but my dad took me to Upton Park a couple of times. I think yeah. I saw Everton, Middlesbrough. Uh, I've never watched West Ham play a big team, and that's <laughs> what I'm hoping for this season. But yeah, I've always loved West Ham. Yeah, like it's just been my life. So, and and, and I think you know, and, and that and that's sweet, isn't it? Because I mean, you know, there's a lot of people. I know, I know, we sort of. People gloss over the fact when you say, why do you support West Ham? And people go, oh, because my, my dad and my, or my granddad or my nan or, or all of the above for you. Yeah. It's not It's not that. It's, it, you know, it's, the fact is it, it, that sort of, that brings like a family community feel to the club. And I think mm-hmm. that's that was what was really special about Saturday is, you know, and you said the other day, you know, I watched your vlog this morning and, um, and you were saying that, you know, you've met a lot of people. Obviously, I'm the same. I haven't, I've done this for 15 months now. Maybe, you know, maybe, six, maybe almost, yeah, 16 months. Like yeah. I've, I've met about three people. I've interviewed about 400 people. I've met about three. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like physically yeah. met three people. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you said, you know, the other day, you know, you, people come at you, people you made friends, you know, virtually. Now you're sort of seeing them face to face. And it's, it's a weird thing, but it, it's, a, but it just shows what a great, bunch of West Ham fans are yeah it's definitely it? a big family like mm. I've made such good friends with people just through Twitter and I've, I was walking outside the stadium people going Lauren hi it's me from Twitter and I was like mm-hmm. oh my god it's nice isn't it it's, it's nice surreal, yeah yeah it's nice as well because like I mean I was um, so like I think me and my wife and my daughter went went up London spent a few days up in London being a tourist and and we went on the old Tim's Clippers, and there's there's a guy who works in the Clippers who's um who's a is a is a it's a viewer of, of the channel, and so it was really nice to sort of sit down and chat with him. I know he's technically yeah. working, but you know, or I was at an ex-player night the other night, and people can't say, "Russ, how are you?" It's 
I, I, you know, I'll be honest, I didn't know who they were, but they were like, oh, I follow you on Twitter. Oh. So it, it, it doesn't yeah. matter. You know, you say, it's just, it's, I just love it. And obviously, I've been very fortunate to interview people all over the world who support West Ham. Uh, and some may never, ever foot, you know, step foot in the London Stadium. But it don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter at all. And, and particularly in a virtual sense as well, you know, some people might never go to back to West, go, go to London Stadium because of everything COVID wise and stuff. But, yeah, you know, with YouTube and stuff, people can still feel like they're engaged and part of that community. You know, it's not the same as going into a pub and having a beer and singing bubbles. But, yeah, yeah, you know, the stuff you your vlogs and stuff other people do, it just still keeps that, that sort of spirit up. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I think yeah, we're so very I. special. Very special set of fans. Yeah, the video I posted, um, I said in it that I'm posting it so people that will never be able to go to games can see what it's like and feel the atmosphere. And I literally yeah. had comments saying, thank you so much for posting this because I actually got a feel for what it's like. I'm That's like, the thing. I'm yeah. glad to be able to do that for people. So. That's what I mean. It's, and it, it, it's, you know, you think it's a relatively simple thing to do, but for a lot of people, as I said, they're never going to set foot in in London, yeah. in Newham, in England, maybe never going to come over here, and and so for them to feel connected, it's and I know so older fan, older fans maybe don't understand that as much because you know for them you know it might be oh, you're born in East Ham, you're going to be a West Ham fan, and you know yeah, yeah. you're not an out, you're an out in no respect to my friend Nigel, but you're an in town out of town, and I mean, you don't like it's different now. In in you know West Ham is a is got fans all over the world, and so doing stuff like you're doing um, and stuff that I do and, and various other channels, it really helps people get that sense of togetherness, which they would normally not have had. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's, it's, it's a, it's a privilege to do it. You don't, and you, don't, you probably don't realize you, what you're doing, you know what I mean? As much. And then when you get the comments and people go, Oh my God, this is a lifesaver. Thank you. I love yeah, this yeah. so much. You go, Fucking hell, literally what I'm doing is talking to a camera or, 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 or having <laughs> a chat with Loz about West Ham. You know, but, <laughs> People would love it, and and, and mm. that's that's it's such a simple thing, but nowadays particularly, you know, it's it's about making sure that we're connecting with people because we can't do it physically as much as we can used to be. So it's all virtually now. But uh, yeah, oh, we're getting a bit deep, aren't we? I love I'm it. Like, I feel like all through COVID, though, I do you feel like everyone's come together more, but like through social it's media, weird. And stuff. it's weird, isn't it? It's we've been we've never I don't think we've ever been closer, but haven't met. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's like it's like in, in my job, you know, we we before COVID, we'd have like me and the sales team, we might have one meeting on a on a Monday, and that's mm. it. This, you know, since since we had to shut the office and stuff, every day we're meeting in the morning, and and yeah. we're probably more together than we have been before. And you know, when we did meet up for a summer party, it was just like you know we were not meeting for the first some people we were just meeting for the first time realistically because i'd never seen them before then started you know um before in the office so mm. it's uh yeah it's a weird it's a weird thing we've never been closer but never been further apart yeah i know um i met someone at the stadium that i met on twitter and i literally just ran up to her and gave her a hug like i've known her for years yeah weird like, I, I find it crazy yeah <laughs> it's never yeah but it's like you I, I think it's something which I think sort of people of a certain generation don't don't get because like how can you be friends with someone like that because on Twitter but for no disrespect loss but for the younger generation that's how people communicate and it's like yeah, same, as, know, same yeah. as my daughter Flo you know she you know she's she hasn't given like two hoots since she went into lockdown two hoots because it's all on Facebook mm -hmm. and TikTok and you know she's it's just the normal talking to our yeah, friends on FaceTime is, yeah. and stuff. And, and where, where sort of the older generations had to sort of take that on board and learn that, you know, I remember Flo teaching my mother-in-law how to FaceTime, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it was like she was trying to crack the Enigma code or something like that. Do you know what I mean? She just didn't yeah. really understand it, but now she's on it. She's got the phone and you know, it's just, I love it. No, I love it. And I love the fact that we just talk about absolute rubbish on this show. <laughs> It's all good, but you enjoy it. But you enjoy that. I mean, we'll, we'll put a link to the 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 YouTube in, in the the YouTube. I sound like, I'm like I sound like I'm <laughs> the, <pat>. YouTube. <laughs> the YouTube. Try the Facebook. Um, we'll put a link to that in there, um, so people can enjoy. Because as I said, you just started it. Few few vids. Enjoying it. You enjoyed it. 
Yeah, I'm loving it. I don't, I find it hard to know what to film. Like when I started, I was like, I'm going to talk about all the transfers and stuff. And then West Ham <laughs> have done nothing. <laughs> nothing so I'm to like... talk about, Loz, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just showed like all of my West Ham stuff I have. Obviously yeah. didn't go into the match day. My predictions for the season. Yeah. It is hard. It is hard to. It's not... hard to know what to talk about. Yeah, it's hard when there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> I think. I think. I think that's the trouble, particularly with closed season. A lot of channels struggle to talk yeah. about things when there's nothing to talk about. You know, it's like um, obviously you had the Euros and stuff. So some channels went more to the Euros, but still, yeah. it's like even now, you know, you've got and when there is a little bit of information. Everyone talks about it. So, so yeah, right. everyone knows nothing, already. So what's exactly. The point? People have nothing to talk about. And then everyone's talking about Milenkovic and, and Zuma today. Everyone's talking about that. You know, every channel is like, then it's like, oh, okay. So you listen. And it's to, all different information as well. You're like, what do I believe? Exactly. Just, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe. It used to be, you don't believe anything until they've got the scarf out at the uh, <laughs> at the ground but now it's not you don't believe they've signed until the the video comes out innit? yeah come on your own <laughs> yeah come on your own and, and until west ham clips puts a funny you know, jordan hugel face on on the new play you know he hasn't signed yet so um but yeah it's, it's weird in it now because that's that's what people look for. you know it's not it isn't that now it is the it's sort of the um, like Ariola when he signed because that came out of nowhere, really, didn't it? It's like it yeah, was it went like quiet. Along, and then it was like right. Typically, when I was away on holiday, okay, <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna it's rough off, it's rough off. <laughs> yeah, 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 announce yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> announce it. <laughs> Fuck you, button. It's like yeah. Um. So yeah, but uh, that's the way it should happen, isn't it? I don't like these pro- these sort of yeah, prolonged weeks con- and weeks. Oh. I like the excitement of it being like, let's go, let's go. Yeah, I like the the excitement of waking up and like everyone's like on Twitter going, he's signed, you know, and apparently the Areola stuff, all these videos and all the contracts was was done the day before. Yeah. So literally it was, right, signed, bosh, 11 o'clock, out. You know, that's the way it should be, man. That's the way it should be. But uh, hopefully a few more of these coming up. Hopefully. I think they were. I think Moyes is working from the back or upwards. Yeah. So definitely. he's got the goalkeeper now, a defender, then Center, a midfielder, yeah, and then a striker. That's that's the way I'm hoping. As long as we get that striker in, yeah. we, we need that, don't we? <laughs> well, we do. But then you know, then he might pull out a Lingard. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, where's you know, everyone was like baying for this striker, and then he gets Lingard. He gets nine out of nine in eleven or something ridiculous like that. And it's like, you know, a striker wouldn't have probably got that return. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just... I mean Ben Rama has been doing really well. Oh, I think he's going to smash it this year, and he yeah, seems to really definitely. have got it between his teeth, and that's what we want. That's what we love. We love those those types of players, don't we? So showing um... up against his old club as well with that blinding goal. <laughs> it was <for> me. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I just think he's for me. I just think he's he has all the components to be a proper like someone that we talk about in. 20 years time when we're doing mm. Miami's 11s again, or well, probably won't do it by then because I'll be 60, <laughs> but I might be, I might still be doing oh, it, but yeah, yeah, till I'm 60 and, <laughs> and talking about him in the same light as Payet maybe, or people, because he's got the attributes, but what I like about Ben Rami is he's got that fight in him as well. You know, he's got that sort of like, he just seems to like, you know, fight for the ball a little bit, which yeah, yeah. sometimes the more flair players don't, you know, Anderson, people would never track back mm. and, he seems to sort of has got it, so we'll see. We'll see. Right, Loz, let's 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 do your hammers eleven, right? So everyone we have on the channel, bar uh, Harry Redknapp, Ian Bishop, and Nigel Rear Coker. Everyone else has put an eleven together. So the idea okay. is with the fans, you can pick whatever criteria. It doesn't have to be the best. It can be the worst. It's up to you. Whoever you want to pick, your favourites. Not necessarily you have to be the best. You know, you whatever. Um, but the only rule is you have to be alive to have seen them play. Otherwise. We'd have all put Bobby Moore in our team. We'd have all put Billy Bonds. But I never saw any of them play. Trevor yeah. Brooking never saw any of them play. So it, it just makes it more interesting. And also, to be honest, I like we to be perfectly fair, we, we tend to really only interview people from about 30 to 50. So it's quite nice to have, a, have some relatively <laughs> I found younger. I it quite hard. I was like, oh, my God, I can put... It's hard. I mean, it's hard. I'm legends. That's what I mean. It's hard for you. <laughs> but you got to think, could you imagine someone who's been supporting the since the 60s and they've played they've seen Bobby Moore play but also they've seen Alvy Martin they've seen Phil Parks they've seen you know Dicanio Macavelli yeah. they've seen them all haven't they so 
yeah, I mean, I was I was like mid ni- early nineties. Nineteen ninety two is my first season, so for me, it was like still really hard for me. And you know, it's just it's what it is. But it's a bit of fun, bit of fun. Yeah. Was, right, okay. So let's start off in your let's start off in goal. So you know, you know who I've game. picked. I'm just I, getting I can... my notes up. <laughs> notes. Yeah, you know who I picked in goal. I can I can guess. I could probably guess, considering you've got his name printed on your shirt again. <laughs> um, it, well, I, it was, I, well, I was going to flick a coin between Roberto and... It's <laughs> Fabianski. I couldn't, keep, there's, I couldn't, there's keep, there's I couldn't keep a straight face, I'll be honest. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face with Roberto. You love Fabianski, don't you? I do. He's just retired from his international football as well. Oh, has he? I never knew that. I would say, yeah. I guess, that's the, why he kissed the badge. Yeah, he oh, announced it today, so. That's a shame. And this will be his last season, won't it, at West Ham? You know, he's going to. I think so, yeah. I think it will be. Obviously, we're not giving, he hasn't signed an extension. So he signed the one new extension last year, weren't he, to say. But I don't think he's going to retire. He didn't say he's going to retire after this. So you'll still see him knocking about somewhere. I hope so. I'll, uh-huh. I'll still follow him about. Yeah. And I think it's good with Ariola coming in as well. Do you know what I mean? As as a you yeah, know, yeah. For for me, that I think people were like, oh yeah, we've got Ariola on, on loan. That's great for me. That's in pre- in previous years at West Ham, it's very much reactive on a year by year basis. So it's like in the summer, okay, this person's going to go. We're going to buy this person, or we need. But that shows some forward planning because yeah, mm. Fabianski is going to be going next season in the end of this season. So let's get someone in now who can understand about the he can play, yeah, you know, 100%. the cup games or whatever. And then when he goes, he can just carry on, and there's no, there's been no transition. Um, I'm I'm a big fan of that. And um, it's nice to see. But we'll put Fabianski in goal. I, 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 I did guess that, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest. I thought, well, all, the, all, Rand, all your best mate, Darren Randolph, I thought you might put him. But, yeah. I don't know guys. what's going to happen with him. Got too He'll many still... keepers, haven't we? We have a lot. We do. Yes, we saw the Scottish <laughs> bloke as well, didn't we? <laughs> got five now. He's got five goalkeepers. Well, he's all right. He's going out of Alexandra Burke. He ain't too bothered. You know what I mean? Fair play to him. He's doing all right. He's all right. He's all right. Yeah, I've put Fabianski in. Right, let's move into defence. Who's your first defender going to be? Um, I I don't know how you say his name. So foul, so foul, Kufau. It's, foul. it's so foul. It should be so Kufau, foul. but it's pronounced the same as so check. I don't, I don't know why. I just but, call him Kufal, but oh, you call on, on you YouTube, it's so foul. Yes, yeah, so foul. <laughs> so foul. Vladimir so foul. Very good right back. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll get a few years out of him. Um, five million quid. <sighs> no bone no. He's really stood out to me, so. He has. I think, I think they both have. I think um, he stood out because he just seemed to, he just seems to, like, get it. mm do you know what I mean? It's not hard. It is not hard to be like revered by West Ham fans. You just got to put it, you just got to have a go in it as long as you have a go. But, you know, I don't yeah. think, I don't, for Vlad, I don't think he's the quickest right back, but I, I don't remember him getting done last season for pace. Do you know no, what I mean? Like, done Jack Grealish as well, didn't he? Yeah, he did that Grealish, <laughs> 100 million pound Jack Grealish in his pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? So for 5 million pound, that ain't bad. But, you mm. know, considering how fast some of these wingers are, he never seemed to got beaten for pace too often. If, I can't really remember the time he did, to be honest. He's just a very, no. very clever defender. All right, we'll put Vlad in. We'll put Vlad in. Right. Who's next? Who's next? I've gone for Oggy, Oggy, Oggy. Oggy, Oggy, Oggy. Top man. My cat's name as well. Is it? Well, there yeah, we go. I didn't, name, I didn't name him after him, but... Or did you? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But why not Fabianski? Because I knew Ogbonna before Fabianski. <laughs> <laughs> Can you change a cat's name? Do you know what? I mean? It's not like the cat's going to know. It's not like it's a kid, is it? They do respond to their names, you know. And, but uh, no, I don't. I think you could go, <laughs> nah, 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 and, and, and they would look up at you. I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> the name, the intonation of Ogbon. Oggy, if you said Fabby. Just saying, just saying. And I'm not causing rows, but I'm just saying, you know, my dog, I reckon I could call anything. As, I went, as long as I do, she would come to me. 
regardless. I'll find the vets off and be like, can I book an appointment for uh, Fabianski? Yeah, yeah. Fabianski. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing that always surprises me when you go to a vet's. And I go, uh, yeah, I've got an appointment for Bella. And then she goes, Bella Budden? No, she's not. <laughs> she's not. But she, that's what they call her, Bella Budden. No, like, just you Bella. know, like a full name. It's like, oh, just, just strange. Especially, <laughs> when she, especially when she gets, like, mail. Like, when you do, like, the mail order sort of um, worming tablets and things yeah, like that. Yeah, I get goes, that as well. Bella Budden. She gets more fucking mail than me. Um, right, we'll put Oggy in. Love Oggy. Absolute classes at the moment. He best, you know, yeah, someone said the other day, best centre back we've had for twenty years, and I actually agree with him, to be honest, because it's um, we haven't had like consistent, like really good consistent players who haven't got. I mean, he gets injured quite a bit, but when he plays, he's. I think if he, if he, if he didn't get injured last season, he would have probably been hammer of the year. I reckon. Yeah, hundred percent. Controversial, right? Okay, we got Sufal. We've got Oggy. Who's next? Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand. I've heard of him. <laughs> I've heard of Rio. Good player. To be honest, I did rush this together and I don't know much about him, but I was like, he's a big name. So I'm <laughs> well, as it's a kid, hard being young. I don't know. It's hard, yeah, it's hard being yeah. young, but there's nothing wrong with being young. There's <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with being young. Rio, yep, I think it's a good choice. Uh, I think Rio was a, was, a, was a great player. Um after West Ham as well, he was a good. I mean, he made 150 odd appearances for West Ham, mm. so it's not like he was he was a fly by night player. He was in it. He was there for a long time, and um, and yeah, Rio Ferdinand, I think it's a good shout. Kufel, um, Oggy, Rio, yeah. And then I don't know if he's before my time, but I've gone Stuart Pearce. Stuart Pearce. Well, I think you. What well, I think. When were you born? When were you born? 1998. Yeah, so I think you. I think you just get in there. I think Pierce. I think Pierce won the nineteen ninety nine um, Hammer of the Year. So no. I'll give you that. So I've got away with that. I'll yeah, I'll, give you, yeah, I'll, give Stuart, <laughs> I'll give you Stuart Pierce. You, you, you're, you're about nine months at the time, but I'll give you Stuart. Pierce. As I said, you haven't got. You know, yeah. It's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm getting. I'm getting soft in my old age. I think we'll put Pierce in. Yep, Stuart Pierce. And because I mean, technically, he's on the coaching staff, isn't it? Where's Dan now? So, yeah, that's not a bad. That's not a bad back four. I tell you, that's not yeah. bad. I don't mean seem to sound surprised. I think there's a good back four. Right, okay. Let's move into midfield then. Who's you going to start with? Declan Rice. Declan Rice. Now, he's very good. It's got to be on there. Brilliant. <laughs> England player. Oh. An amazing. No brainer. And hopefully still with us this season. I, th- I think at least one more season. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I still th- I think... I don't know why I've got a stupid claret like tinted view that we're going to have him for a few, a couple more seasons at least now. Because I think yeah. this season is obviously Mark's last season, and then you know, in essence, Rice is the main man then in the summer. Um, yeah. And you would think as long, as long as we consolidate our position this season. You know, we don't get we're not in relegation, or we have a good good cup run, or something like that. You know, he's had a taste of Europe. Maybe we could even win a cup and go into Europe. You never know with West Ham. We'll mm. get to a final and, and, and play a, a Man City and already qualify for the cup because, you know, as, as it get into the final. Um, then that, that might convince him to at least give it a year. And if you're seeing progression, you know, because for me, I've always wanted to, you know, I mean, you look at someone like Jack Grealish now. So he's gone into City now. And, you know, to be honest... He may not even start every game. Hundred million pound player. He, he yeah. more than likely will not start every game at City. Um, and arguably, they'll probably play on the left. And arguably, he should be in the centre. But actually, that's not his. You know, there's other there's people. It's like this guy called Kevin De Bruyne who's quite good. And, okay, and stuff many like, good players. That's what I mean. He's quite good. And so yeah. I think you know. And also the fact that City has spent so much money this season means maybe they won't have so much in the kitty to spend next time. Either by Kane as well. You know, you think Man United, they've they spent a bit of money as well. They spent a bit of dough. Chelsea look like going to spend about 100 million on Lukaku. So there's not many places for him. You know, I'd say Liverpool isn't really a... that they. I think they've had their time, Liverpool, I think, now. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think those three are going to pull away now a little bit. Um, you would never go to Spurs. And, you know, you look where, everywhere, everywhere else. You know, I don't think he'd go to a European team. He's, you know, so... 
I think he's. Uh, I love him. I think Declan I mean, Rice he's, is. He's twenty two and he's a captain at West Ham. He's. I mean, he's, I mean, he's, he's sat there, isn't he? He's played over a hundred and forty odd games for us as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like you look at like the West Ham all time greats. You've got like Billy Bonds at seven nine nine, uh, Bobby Moore. You know, over six about six hundred appearances, something like that. You know, realistically, where Rice is now, he could play that many games because yeah, yeah. so he could be up there and and he could uh, and and it's always something which. I am um, when I was listening to Peter Crouch's podcast uh, and he interviewed Mark Noble, and there's something in there which really stuck with me. And I hope, hope, hope he sticks with Deck as well. <laughs> where Crouch went, he said he was jealous of Mark Noble. He went, Yeah, I've been, he said, I know I've been, I've played in the Champions League, I won the Champions League, and da 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 da, been to Liverpool, Tottenham, QPRs, you know, all these, all these Burnley, Stoke, but I'd never go down as a legend at any of these places. Yeah. You've won, you know, Mark's basically won nothing, <laughs> won nothing in his career. But he's a legend. Yeah. But he's going to be revered as a legend. He could well have a stand named after him in 20 years' time. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, there's something in that. There's something still really old school about that. So I'd hope yeah, that yeah. Dick would. And when, you know, I just think he's a great player. And also, you know, because because he's done, he's sort of at the cent- he's sort of central midfield position, when he gets older, he can always drop back into the centre back position. So yeah, that's his original, isn't it? That's so. his original position, isn't it? So um, which Pellegrini put him in? Pellegrini put him at CDM. Um, people forget that. It's mm. um, right, but Declan Rice in. Okay, great shout, lots. Who's next? Mark Nabel. Mark Nabel had to be had to it be Nobes. To. I grew up loving Nobes. So well, to all intents and purposes, lots. And most most of your West Ham supporting career, Mark Nabel was. Been there, been there. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, he has. I mean, and you know, I think that's, and that's the thing as well. I think for a lot of people, you know, Mark, as long as they remembered West Ham, they remember Mark Noble. And I think I don't think people realise that. You know, when end of the next end of the next season coming, he's like the stalwart. He's like he's always been there, isn't he? He's like that yeah. sort of. He's not going to be there, and uh, I think that's going to be really, really. When we talk about that first bubbles, you know, that last bubbles, the last game of the season with Mark, is going to be absolutely awful. So emotional. It, it makes me sad just thinking about it, to be honest. It does, doesn't it? But, but Mark gave us like 18 months, or so, not 18 months, but yeah, kind of sort of say like last halfway through last season, wasn't it? He said like, I'm going to go at the end of next season. So yeah, we had yeah. enough time to readjust. It's not like, you know, come May next this next year, he just drops his bombshell. Yeah, this yeah. My last day. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, he just like, walks up, like like your last day at work, you have like a big brown box full of like you know, you know your paperweights. He's like, yeah, I'm off. See you later. You know, it, it's going to be and every every game that he plays will have that extra level of spice. In the same way that the last season at the bowling, it was the last time he played Arsenal at the bowling. It's the last time he played Newcastle at the bowling. Mm. It will be the same with him. It will be the last time he plays against Arsenal. It'll be the last time he plays against. Liverpool, you know, and so they'll have that extra bit of spice in every yeah, game yeah. I think you play. So I think you'll see some amazing performances from next season because he knows he's just got a season just to, you know, cement his legacy really or anything. And um, and hopefully, I mean, you know, well, I imagine hopefully Antonio will as well, but hopefully he'll take over. He better take over Palo de Canio's, you know, Premier League all score record because I'm yeah. a really <laughs> shit season if not because he'll never score a goal and Antonio won't score a goal. It's just so worrying. Um, so hopefully, but yeah, love him, love him. And it's great having a fan. And I always say it, you know, I was fortunate enough last season, the season for last, when we beat Chelsea 3 2 with Yama scoring that last minute goal. Yeah. Uh, Mark wasn't in the squad. And I was what, and I, I, it's, I was gutted I didn't record it because I was watching, literally watched Mark the whole game because he was sat in this little disabled areas, which is where like the auxiliary squad used to sit yeah. um, when there was no one in the stadium. And he was watching it like you were watching it. Like I was watching it, like, like any West Ham fan was watching that game. You know, like berating the referee, kicking every ball, and it was just, just sort of brought home the fact that he's yeah, a proper yeah. West Ham fan. And I know it's silly, but it really sort of like hit home. Mm. And it was such an unusual thing today, um, not having having a player who plays for your club, who's your club captain, who's a one man club, who is a fan as well. It's, it's an incredible. I mean, I mean, he's the most. Isn't he? He's the, he's the most loyal, active player in the world. Yeah, it's now, official now, gone. isn't it? Yeah. Now that Messi's gone, <laughs> when Messi comes to West Ham, um, 
<laughs> part of Sullivan's great plan. We can have Messi, um, Messi, Messi, and uh, could you imagine Messi and Ben Rama? Cool. <laughs> Woo! You'd love S- to see it. Screw you, Neymar. <laughs> screw you, Neymar. We're gonna, we're gonna, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got Jared Bowen. That's what we want. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, lo- yeah, love Nobs. Right, okay, we've got Rice, we've got Nobs. Who's next? Um, Payet. Dimitri Payet. Yep. What about Pyatt? Why is Pyatt in your team, Loz? Because he was amazing when he played for us. Although he snaked us, the way he went off, he he's one of the best players we've ever had. Yeah. Far. So he was. He, he, he you know he was. He, you know to me he was the most. Well, I, I I'd hope that Benny will take over him, but you know he was the most. He's the most technically gifted player I've ever seen mm-hmm. at West Ham. Just is, and there's, there's, and I think now people realise that, you know, and it's, it's nothing you can, you know, yeah, he's, and I think a lot of those players today in the modern game, you, they have that snaky side to them. Do you know what I mean now? Because it yeah, is about, yeah, yeah. you know, a pretentious side to them. We had it with Arnautovic as well, and, you know, Hazard did it a bit to Chelsea as well, and, you know, it's something about being, you know, the best player in the, <laughs> best player in yeah, the club, yeah. really, you know, so, <laughs> but no, yeah, he's pretty, and, you know, I, I don't think we're going to have another situation in our one point in my lifetime where we're going to have a Ballon d'Or nominee, like who's actually playing, you know, the year he's not like Messi at 55, yeah, yeah. you know, he comes down to the stadium. But yeah, he was Ballon d'Or nominee while he was playing for West Ham. He was a top door, top boy at Euros, uh, Euro 2016 as well, wasn't he? So mm. yeah, top man. Okay, right. We've got Reese, 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 right. <laughs> An idiot, Rice. Fucking Reese Bailey. What? I'm in the team. No, 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 no. You're not Reese. Um, we've got Rice. We've got we've got Mark. We've got Pyatt. Who we got next? Who we got next? On oh, a bitch. Arnie. One uh, snake like, to another. I like picking the snakes. <laughs> well, do you know what? It's 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 the it's the bastard players, isn't it? And 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 where Pyatt was just a snake, but like a a, a silent one. Yeah. On out of it's one. You know, on out of it to me is one of those bastard players which you love when he's playing for your team and you despise when he's playing for anyone else. I mean, like proper. I mean, I go back to that time where he, that Burnley game, wasn't it, where he took Ben Mee and just literally laughed in his face. Yeah. And for me, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, I as, a, as a fan, I loved it. If I was a Burnley fan, I'd be absolutely spitting feathers at him. But he was just, yeah. And he, you know, you look at Moyes, you know, Moyes made him, you mm. know, because he was like floundering, really, uh, uh, you know, when he signed for us. You know, he was all excited. I think he paid like 20 million for him from Stoke, something like that. Billich put him on the right and he just wasn't doing it. And then Moyes, he turns up and uh, and says, you know, you stay up there and we'll, you know, and he was brilliant. Yeah. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, I was a massive fan of his when he was at West Ham um, because he had that, I mean, to be honest, you, you look at Moy, and I've said it before, you look at Moyes' one up top you know, formation that he picks, Arnie's the perfect foil for him. Yeah. He's, he's, you know, um, uh, he's better than, uh, you know, a, a 2018 Marko Arnautovic, if we had him last season, we'd have been in the Champions League, no way. <laughs> Wouldn't we? Definitely, yeah. And that's no Definitely. that's no slight in Antonio. He's the best, worst player in the world. You know, he is. He's brilliant. I mean, he's got a great go on Sun on Saturday as well. Um, but Arnie was just had that striker's instinct, yeah, that forwards yeah. instinct, which which yeah, which uh, which, uh, which you can't teach, which is impossible. But yeah, we'll put Arnie in. Okay, so we've got Pyatt, Noble, Rice. I almost said Reese again there. On <laughs> out of each. What is going on? I've got Reese Bays on the head. Right, okay. Who who's next? Who's next? Who we got next? I've gone for the first West Ham player I ever loved. When I was went to my first ever game at Everton, I said to my dad, "Who is he? Because he's my favourite player, Jonathan Marlon Harewood." Oh, Marlon Harewood. <laughs> <laughs> Big Mazza. Oh, she yeah. were ha- she were happy on uh, happy on Saturday seeing Big yeah. Maz. <laughs> oh, I love Big Maz. <laughs> what a player! What I just player. I just remember saying to my dad, I, I was watching him and I was like, I like him. Yeah. And ever since then, I've loved him. He's One like- of my favourite ever players. Yeah, we had him on the channel the other last week, and he's absolutely an absolute gent. Um, I'll have to watch that. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't lost. I mean, yeah, <laughs> like, 
been busy. 11, 11,000 people <laughs> do. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Marlon, yeah, top man, Mazza. Uh, lovely bloke um, and a great fo- I mean, I used to always remember him and I told him this. So where I used to do the DJ in Upton Park was so that the box was like between the Bobby Moore and whatever we were calling that West Stand, our Pari, Dr. Martins, Betway, wherever the stand was called. Yeah. And, and so there was like the, the scoreboard and then uh, we were like one, well, we were the first couple of windows and the police controlling the couple. And so that corner, and I said to Maz, I went, so basically you would, you always took the ball right into that corner. I always used to call his Harewood corner because you'd always do a little turn and then run along the byline. He went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> like he knew exactly what I was talking about. But yeah, yeah, top man. I love, I love Maz. Right. Okay. So we've got, We've got 10 players so far. There's one more spot. Who's going to make it? Di Canio. D.I. Canio. D.I. Canio. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's Sheffield Wednesday, that one. But, yeah, no, Paolo Di Canio. Yeah, what, what, what a player. What a player. What a player. Legend. Legend. Absolute legend, legend. of a man. Crazy, crazy, you know. And, that, and that's the difference between someone like Pyatt. You know, I think, you know, you look at Pyatt and Di Canio and, and sort of, and you look at on now to and Di Canio was sort of like he had the nastiness, he had the arrogance of Anatovic, he had the skill of Payet, maybe not as much as Payet, but he was like an entertainer, um, yeah. and just love the club. I, I love I love players who well, first I love players, and I know you I know you've got tattoos. I love players who who have West Ham tattoos because I've any, I respect anyone who's got a tattoo because I'm so needle, needle phobic, it's unbelievable. But, <laughs> um, like, Di Canio's got a tattoo, West Ham tattoo, considering he didn't, you know, he played for Celtic and uh, and and Milan and Lazio and he was managed, you know, he had a West Ham tattoo. Yeah, and yeah. And there's something special about somebody who's, who's inked themselves with a team they've, I mean, I haven't got, like, you know, tattoos of, that all the companies I've worked for, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, oh, it's, Can- it. it's Canton Media, e tabs did not know. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. But he has. And I think that's just great. And I, I love to see those types of things. Even during lockdown, when he was like, it was a Facebook thing where he's, he was singing bubbles while doing kick-ups, but he had this little 1950s West Ham shirt on. So it wasn't even, yeah, like, I remember seeing that. it wasn't even one of his own shirts. You know, someone's gone to buy that, whether it's his agent or whatever. Mm. That that's I, I love stuff like that. We all love that type of stuff when it comes to the Canio. Um and just West Ham in general. You know, we love seeing those things in the players. Yeah. Right, Loz, right. For someone who's just put that together, they ain't a bad team. It was a bit rough, but I it's, uh, I think it's a good team. I think it's a good team, Loz. And I think people would agree that's that's, that's, that's a nice team. Considering your reference point is somewhat, you know, smaller than others, just because you you know you're younger than others. I think you've put a good team together, Loz. Stretched it a little bit for Stuart Pierce, but <laughs> I allow it. Andy Canio, really, but I allow it. I allow Thank it you. because, because, uh, yeah, just because. It's otherwise, you have to put Aaron Cress or I mean, Aaron Cress is all right. I did um, think that, but I was like, oh, will people judge me for not No, about no, it? not at all. You put Cress in, you could have put in, uh, you know, you could have put in Simeone Zaza up front or, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good team, though. If you put I think it's a great out. team. I mean, it's a great team. Yeah. I mean, it's good. You've got a bit of everything. And you've got in their pomp. It's like Mark Noble, sort of 2016 Mark Noble, 15, 16 Mark Noble in his, in his pomp would have been would have been him and Rice now. Would, then, then the duo would be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, fantastic. Loz, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. There was nothing yeah. to be. What was, what was there to be scared of? And nervous. I don't know. I, I'm just a nervous person in general. Oh, well, but doesn't matter. Thank you for helping Absolute boost pleasure. my confidence. Oh, don't be silly. I'll do it again now. Oh, <laughs> shucks. Don't be silly. Um, as I said, we'll put a link to Lozzie's uh, YouTube channel. Give it, show us some love. You're doing well. You've got, some, got about almost 500, 450 mm. subs. I'm like, isn't it? I think it's thanks vid- to my Twitter. They're very the free supportive. videos. That's, that's fucking good. I tell you. That's very good. Um, as I said, um, give it a like, give it a share, and, and obviously give my as Levin a like. Why are you there? If you're not, just give me a like as well. Might as well. Or subscribe. Um, but for myself and from Laws, take care and stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jab appointments. Very important. And make sure you download your NHS app by the sounds of it as well if you want to go to London Stadium. <laughs> um, <laughs> come on, you irons, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Much love.